Once again, this is Church Media TT on the YouTube channel, and I know that many of you have already subscribed, and there are those who still kind of hesitate and do not hesitate because you're missing out on a lot of things that are happening on Church Media TT. So continue to subscribe, continue to press that notification bell, so you will always be notified of the Know Your Bible broadcast on Church Media TT, the YouTube channel, all right? We pray also that God will continue to bless you and your family richly in all things as you dig deep, as you search, as you read, as you study the Word of God. Well, before we get into uh, our continuous series of lessons that we are doing here of meeting the Messiah in His kingdom and in His church, I'm thankful for the journey with patience that we have been looking at from the beginning to this point. I'm thankful and may we, as we continue to go through this journey, we pray that we'll be blessed having the information that will help make us stronger in the faith and help those who are not in the faith to become children of God. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, as we approach your divine throne of grace, we recognize your greatness your love, your kindness, your mercies. We recognize that you are a God of consuming fire and who also disciplines us when we go wrong. As we read, search, and study your words, we pray that we'll be drawn closer to you. We pray that obedience to your gospel will help all those who have not yet walked this road to be able to see the necessity to do so. We pray for those who have done so that they remain committed and faithful that your words will truly remain on our hearts, strengthening us and helping us, dear Father, to be further committed to you. As we continue our study, may you help us to understand and may you help us, dear Father, to be drawn closer. As we ask this prayer in Jesus' name with thanksgiving, amen. All right, we are in the book of Isaiah. Yes, and... Uh, do not get weary in the studies that we are looking at, but as we try to understand what was in the mind of God as he reveals these things to us, we can now further appreciate the blessing that comes with his word in our lives so that the decisions that people have to make and will eventually have to make before time runs out with us is that God has made himself known, revealed through his prophets, his purpose, his intent, his design. He wants us to see from before the foundation of the world what that same intent and purpose was. So through biblical history, we can come to the point of saying, yes, I understand why I need to be in his kingdom, in his church, because of his Messiah. So let's continue from Isaiah chapter number 2. We read verse 2 and 3 says, It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. In the top of the mountain shall be exalted above the hills. All nations shall flow unto it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways. We will walk in his path, for out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the capital city of Palestine. <clears throat> I would like to focus this morning on what will happen in the house of the God of Jacob. As Isaiah prophesies, as Isaiah talks about 
the things that God would have us to know. Remember, what God wants us to know, he reveals. What he does not want us to know is kept in secret. So when you read verse number 3, the scripture tells us what will happen or what was expected to happen in the house of God of Jacob. He says, he will teach us of his ways. So in God's house is where they would learn of God's ways. In this dwelling place of God is where they would learn of his purposes. Remember we read at some point in time where Isaiah also said in verse 8 and 9 of chapter 55, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, say the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We did conclude that God's intent and purpose and design is not the same as ours. And therefore, in his house, he will teach us of his purposes. He will teach us of his intent. And the reason for that is, Jeremiah tells us in chapter 10 and verse number 23, O Lord, he says, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. So in the dwelling place of God, he's going to teach us of his ways that we can walk in his steps. Jeremiah also says in chapter 17, verse 9 and 10, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So it is better to put our trust in someone who knows us better than ourselves. So in the house of God, in the dwelling place, he will teach us of his ways because Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there are the ways <coughs> excuse me, of death. So he will teach us of his ways. In the house of God, we will walk in his paths. The psalmist says in chapter 37 and verse 23, that the steps of a good man are ordered by whom? The Lord. And he delighted in his way. So when we are able to walk in the steps of the Lord, when we are directed to walk in his paths, it's obvious that it will be well-pleasing to the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 35, the psalmist says, Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. In what? In the commandments of God. You see, the commandments of God and the, the instruction that God gave should not really be burdensome for us. It really teaches us how to, to walk and to live in a manner that is pleasing to God. So sometimes the instruction that God gave may seem hard to bear, but it's really for our benefit. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So if you want to walk in moral depravity or darkness, you would not be able to find your way to the light except God's word, which is like light, directs us into that path of righteousness. So again, in the house of God, he will teach us of his ways. We will walk in his paths. And then he said something very interesting. Out of Zion, hmm, shall go forth the law. Now we must understand that in God's plan to have a people that belong to him. You remember the children of Israel was in Egypt. When they came out of Egypt, they became a nation. They were a nation even in the wilderness. But they needed to have laws because why? They often violate the rules of God. So the scripture tells us why those rules and those laws were given. Remember the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, we read in verse number 19, wherefore it says, then save the law, it was added because of transgressions. 
<coughs> excuse me, and because of us, because of transgression or disobedience, it was till the seed, here it comes, shall come. To whom the promise was made, it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. So we know, based on what verse 16 says, that the seed is Christ, that the law was just there for a particular reason, and it did not destroy the, the promise or, or cause a deviation from the promise that God made, whereby Christ would come and they'll be able to receive more benefits through him. So out of Zion now, the place where they are accustomed, where the law had made its footing, shall go forth that law. Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17, Jesus said, Think not that I come to destroy the law. No. All the prophets are not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And the words mean simply that Christ came to bring to the realization how the law ought to be lived while fulfilling what the law said. Remember Luke 24, uh, 44 following, he says, all that is written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalm concerning me must be fulfilled. So from that place called Zion, something needs to go forth in order for something else to exist. And so the Bible tells us, even in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter number 22, from verse number 34, when the Pharisees had heard that he put the Sadducees to silence, they gathered together, and one of them was a lawyer, asked him a question, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said, you know, love the Lord like God, all like heart, soul, and, and mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto this, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So it means then that once you're able to do what the law says, you are in line with God, you're in line with his purpose. But the law couldn't make anyone perfect. So something else had to come to replace or to remove that law that we'll be able now to find ourselves under another type of obedience. So in Colossians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul made mention of the blotting out of the handwriting of handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us he took it out of the way nailing it to his cross having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over in them so he said listen because the death of jesus christ on the cross it had brought an end when it has to be fulfilled brought an end to what seems to be the law that could not bring people to perfection. Hebrews chapter 7, uh, verse number 16 to 19. So it tells us that God now, even having to spoil principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. So even in the area of those angelic beings with their powers and authorities, they could not in any way supersede what Christ would have done to introduce to us something by which we'll now be under it is called the new covenant so nobody's supposed to judge us with the old law in meat and in drink and in respect to holy day and new moon and, and sabbath days why in verse 17 it was just a shadow of things to come but the body is christ so the law was just a shadow a shadow is not the real thing it's the image of something else it's not the real thing but the body is of Christ. So for Christ to come and to bring forth that change and to allow us now to understand that in God's house, the law needed to go so that something else would come and provide the benefits that are necessary towards those who would now become part of the household of God. The Bible tells us what it is. In the same Isaiah, chapter number 2, the Bible says, And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So while the law would make its exit, the word of the Lord is going to come. Now the question is, what is the word of the Lord that's going to come from Jerusalem? But in Luke 16, we know that the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man is pressed by force unto it. 
They're going towards something that seems to have a greater impact than what the law has. And we learned that what had a greater impact was simply the gospel. And so the gospel of Christ is now the means by which coming from Jerusalem, which will start from Jerusalem, will go out into the world. So in other words, the law is not going to go out from uh, Zion to be proclaimed in different places. Because the law cannot bring both Jew and Gentile together. The law was only for the Israelites. And those who committed themselves under Israelites' rule or law, they were able to be known as proselytes. But God has since removed that. And why did God since remove that? Because he wanted everyone to become part of the body or the household of God. So in Galatians chapter number 3, we learn in verse number 20, Seven, for as many as you have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, male nor female, you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. <claps> Wonderful, isn't it? So we go back again to Galatians chapter 3 verse number 16, where the promise was made. You are part of Abraham's seed. And according as according to the promise so that means that Christ was the plan all along he was the one that was supposed to come all along so what is going to happen from Jerusalem is that the gospel now is going to be proclaimed how do I know that Acts chapter 1 verse number 8 but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you Jesus said and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem out of Zion shall go for the law and the gospel started where? In Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And to the uttermost part of the earth. So the apostles were not proclaiming or preaching any other message than just the gospel of Christ. They were not enforcing keeping the law like the Sabbath and using your instrumental music and tithes. No, they were enforcing the gospel of Christ. Wow. So that's the reason why. In Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 4, when he says, You shall judge among the nations, they shall rebuke many people, they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Where are you going to find this happening? Where you can turn swords into plowshares and, and, and pruning hooks, as the scripture says. Um, spears and the pruning hooks. Where are you going to find uh, war tools or war utensils turning into farming tools? Because it indicates peace as opposed to war. The only place where you could find that is in God's house. That's why I repeat what I said in 1 Timothy 3.15. The scripture says, if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. How to conduct yourself in God's house because of the church of the living God. So in God's house, there's supposed to be peace, not war. In God's house. All right? Jesus himself said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because I bring peace to you. Romans 5 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the kind of peace that God wants us to have. That's the kind of peace that God wants us to understand. It only happens in the house of God. All right? So, with all of that prophecy being made by Isaiah, it's clear to understand that God's plan all along was to introduce to us this house, this dwelling place of which he wants all individuals to be a part of. Whether you're black or white, it doesn't matter whether you are uh, of this particular race or that particular race, all come together in Christ Jesus that we can have this opportunity to be saved. All right? And that is what awaiting everyone who considers this lesson today. That God has established his house. His house is his dwelling place. His dwelling place is known as the church. And we also see how that is known as the kingdom. 
So stay tuned for our next lesson. We'll begin to view even more that from the prophecy of Isaiah, we need to look at another prophecy that's very important that help us to understand how we can meet the Messiah in his kingdom and in his church. So may God bless you until we meet again. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe What the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he died on Calvary I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set me free in me So I might live with him in glory I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe when the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set the people free, free. So I might live with him in glory